Hi everybody. Um, over the next two videos I'm going to show you some Astro DIY. There um, going to be three topics for discussion. The first video is going to look at a red dot finder with a hot shoe mount to go on top of the camera, um, an astronomical power supply, and a dew heater and dew strap um, as well. But that'll be a separate video because that's quite an involved one as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the red dot finder first of all. So this is a standard red dot finder that you can buy from eBay or anywhere else. And why have I modified it? Well, the standard one obviously comes with a little foot that fits either onto a, uh, a refactor or um, a dovetail. Um, but that's not going to fit on top of a camera. And if you're taking wide field astrophotography, you could really do with something to help you line up the camera. And that's exactly what this little baby does. Fits on top and allows me to look through and sight along and also still use the adjustment for the red dot finder. Best thing is, it cost me um, £7 for the finder and about £3 for the uh, uh, for the two parts that go here. So how, what does it consist of? Well, it's really simple. Um, so when you buy the red dot finder on eBay, it will come pre-assembled and it comes with this, uh, this. So these are the parts you're going to need. Um, the red dot finder, and you want to choose one off eBay that comes with this little clamping mechanism around the top held together with two screws. I'll show you a picture of that now. Um, then you need a light stand to flash hot shoe adapter. Um, also available from eBay China um, for very little money. And finally then you want, and I got the double version of this, which is basically a uh, cold shoe with two knurled locking nuts. One will lock into the underside of here, um, so you just need to screw it in. And let's just make it a bit lower down. We don't need too much space with it. Okay. Anything we do want to do is line it up. So that the, the square is um, at an angle. Okay, so we take this off, you undo the two screws and, and remove the red dot finder from the, um, from the base. And then what you'll find is that the base here actually is a little bit thicker. In fact, it's, uh, it comes all the way along. And these are slots so that the screw heads can be held in place like so. So what I've done is to go along on either side and dremel away. And the reason is, if you look at the, um, the depth here, it's relatively short. And to get the grip onto the uh, adapter like so, so that it doesn't fall off, um, you need to, to dremel it away. Uh, but that's it. Nice and simple. And for a tenor, I've got something that uh, works a treat for wide field astrophotography. Good luck with that. Okay, for the semo second demo, um, I just wanted to show you this. And uh, yeah, we prob you probably have something similar. Um, it's lots of different power supplies, one for the scope, one for the dew heaters, one for the camera. Um, in my case, I use laptop power supplies, um, and they're good. Um, they come with these long IEC cables often, and then you have to mount up with uh, um, cigarette adapters on the back end. And it was okay, um, but in the cold, you can see it's quite a little mess, it gets tangled, not easy to use, because very stiff in the cold, I have to say. And that's even without having to have the uh, proverbial reel of uh, um, 
power cable running out from the, the garage. Um, so what did I do? I wanted to replace all of that uh, and also enhance it. And so what I've come up with is this. And uh, yeah, just to show you. First of all, so what I've got on here is XLR connectors. They're the connectors that are typically used for um, uh, microphone um, and studio work. So they look a bit like this, and I've chosen the three pin version of it. Um, so they're locking, that's the good thing, which the cigarette lighter plugs aren't. So when I plug in, it's uh, secure, and then to take it out, I can just press the button and away it goes. Um, yeah, I've run 10 meters of, and I only need low. Um, low power cable really, so this is just 5 amp cable. Um, so 5 amps at 240 gives me the 22 amps uh, out of the internal power supply in this and that's enough to drive. Um, I've got three uh, XLR 12 volt connectors, a little um, 2.1 pin that's also a uh, 12 volt power supply and that goes to a powered USB hub which is also a charger um, which will act as both a hub for my camera and my mount and guide scope and also can charge for instance the, the, the camera and, and my phone if I wanted to and I've just mounted that on velcro like so so that uh, I can take it off when I need to. Um, the good thing about this, I mean, you can buy something similar on the market. It'll cost you several hundred pounds. Um, the good thing about this, in total, it cost me 25 pounds. Um, so a really uh, worthwhile saving. Yes, it takes a little bit of electronics, um, uh, but nothing, nothing more than uh, simple soldering skills. Um, I did make it slightly more complex by making the uh, the fourth connector here. I've got to put the labels on it yet, uh, but the fourth connector is actually a uh, six volt. So I had to make up a little circuit for that, um, but I'll show you that shortly as well. Okay, let's have a look inside. Okay, so it's a... Um ABS box. Um, I didn't want a metal box uh, just to give me a, a false sense of security if you like about the power. So here's the power supply inside the box uh, as it arrived from eBay um, <coughs> with one of the XLR connectors and as you can see there's just not a lot of room. I've even modified the box and taken out the central screw on the, the rear side trying to give myself a bit more room um, but it was just a bit too tight. I used the graph paper underneath to sketch out where I wanted the, the four uh, XLR connectors to go and also the 2.1mm uh, connector. So what I ended up doing was um, actually removing the cover. Um, by the way I stuck it down to the bottom of the box with double sided tape. Um, which seems to hold it quite well. So uh, yeah, pretty pretty standard power supply inside. Uh, all the terminal blocks are on the far right. Um, there's a couple of heat sinks on the left and on the back. Um, but uh, yeah, all in all it fits in there quite nicely now. Um, I did actually have to trim the rear heat sink slightly on the upper right hand side. But the XLR connectors take uh, a reasonable amount of space, about 25mm uh, um, they come in. Um, so I had to uh, arrange the holes so that I could get the wiring around um, the capacitors and such on the, on the power supply. So here we go, I'm ready to uh, drill the holes now. Um, the small ones are fine but the XLR is a funny shape on the back and needs somewhere between a 22 and a 23mm drill. I used a 23mm to start with on the first hole, made a right mess of it. Um, ended up changing to a, uh, a wood boring bit 
um, at 22 mil and that was a lot better. Okay so this is what it looks like inside the box when it's uh, all the holes are drilled and it's finished being wired up. Um, down the bottom there you can see the uh, 6 volt circuit. Next, And then the, the last one I mentioned is a 6 volt. Uh, you probably can't see it right at the bottom down there, stuck to the bottom is a small circuit board. It's uh, covered in insulation tape now as well, um, but pretty straightforward to do. To make that 6 volt um, circuit what I did was to buy a couple of different bits and pieces. So I've got these little um, Vero boards. Um, okay, I've got some spare. I've got some voltage converters from Bright Components, along with also some, and these are 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors, just uh, simple capacitors. And it'll regulate down to six volts from anything um, about two volts over that, up to 30, 30 volts. So yeah. Um, looks okay. I've used the speaker cable for the the connects connection wires um, going to the terminal block. Not much else to say really. There's still plenty of space inside there. Um, I fixed the little circuit to the bottom using double-sided tape again, and then uh, covered it up in insulation tape as well, just to make sure. So here's the. XLR cables as they arrive, just one meter long. Um, it's a, a male to female, um, so I needed to re-engineer them. There's the AZEQ6 uh, scope power supply in the background, um, and I also put in various other things like the dew heater controller, um, a cigar lighter, and so on. Okay, so this is. This is what I did with the um, with the various cables that I bought. Um, so I would cut, chop off one end, usually the female end, hence that one, uh, and then I would replace it. In this case, I've replaced it with a cigarette lighter adapter um, because what I have here uh, is a, a laptop power supply, which comes with a, a cigar cigar lighter attachment. The dew heater was the next one and I decided to use on that because that could even be higher than the laptop um, so I decided I'd got some of this uh, flexible cable left over so I decided to use that for the uh, the main um, lead coming out and that's two and a half no that's 0.75 mil cable so that's more than capable of driving the uh, the three three channels that I've got there and then the last one I've got here I've made up is a uh, scope cable for my AZ-Q6. Um, so it's the same thing, um, three connectors on this end for the XLR go into my uh, two pins on the other end. By the way, these three three pin XLRs, they are um, negative positive and a shield um, connection. So when you buy them in the bag, they are basically what they call balanced and shielded cables. So in, in most of the cases where we're just using 12 volts, we only want two connections. So I use the positive and negative, and the shield I just um, cut off at the end. So it's still shielded cable, so I should cut down on inductive noise anyway. Um, but yeah, it was the it was the best option I think for for the connection. It's a nice simple connection, as you can see, and it works a treat, I have to say. So once it was all assembled and I checked uh, voltages, etc., and polarities, um, I needed to do a stress test. Um, the XLR cable is microphone signals normally, so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to overheat or overstress the components, and also check the the amount of temperature uh, rise for the the box itself when the power supply was under load. So I even had my phone and iPad charging on the uh, USB key. Um, or key thing, and uh, and even a laptop so power supply as well, uh, and this was drawing the most. Um, this was drawing about four and a half amps, and actually the XLR cable does get um, slightly warm um, with that. Yeah, really, only lukewarm, and it stabilised after a few minutes um, because I'd uh, actually was charging it from empty, so it was as bad as it was going to get in a uh, 25 degree. 
centigrade uh, room as well so it was already a, a pretty severe test okay so here it is in action um, still missing a strap and also some labels but uh, yeah it's working really well and compared with what I had before uh, it's a fantastic improvement so um, yeah um, have a go of course be careful it is mains electric although most of it 12 volt but great